Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts. In my last video, I came up with this really fun project called the Wham Jammer, which hooks up to your Digitech Whammy 5 pedal and makes it do things like this. I enjoyed this project so much, I decided to make a permanent version in a nice enclosure. Over the next couple of videos, I'll show you how I made this and hopefully inspire you to make your own. Once again, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping to make this project possible. Alright, let's get started! In the last video, I showed you how to make a breadboarded version of this circuit and hook it up to your Digitech Whammy 5 pedal. This is fun to try it out, but is not a good permanent solution. For our permanent version, we're going to use an Adafruit Permaproto half-size breadboard. Before you start, make sure you visit notesandvolts.com for a full parts list, schematics, and a handy visual build guide. Just watch the video, follow along with the diagrams, and you should have no trouble. Alright, let's get started. We'll take our Permaproto board and place the Arduino Nano exactly as shown on the diagram. So the upper left hand pin is on pin 6 on the Proto board. Also notice how I'm putting it closer to the bottom of the board than the top, so it's not equally spaced on the board. Now here's a good trick that I use. I take blue painter's tape and hold the component on the board with it. That way I can flip the board over and the component will stay right in place. Now I'll grab my soldering iron and tack the four corner pins to hold the chip in place. Now I'll just go down the line and solder the rest of the pins. Now you can flip the board over, remove the tape, and the Nano is soldered to the board. Now we'll solder our 8-pin chip socket to the board. Check the diagram once again to find the exact hole location and put it in place. Notice there's a small notch on the right side of the chip socket, so make sure that notch is pointed towards the right. Once again, we'll use the tape technique to hold the chip in place, and then we'll solder all the pins to the board. Now I'll start adding the jumper wires to the board. I'm using 22 gauge solid core wire for all onboard connections. Here's a little trick I use to cut the wire to the correct length. First, I strip and bend one of the ends. Then I run the wire along the board and use my thumbnail to put a mark in the wire exactly where I need to strip it. I strip the insulation exactly at the mark. The result is a piece of wire the exact length I need. Now just flip the board and solder the wire in place. Now just attach the other wires using the same technique. Now we'll install a two pin header in this location. This will allow us to disconnect the MIDI circuit from the Arduino. You can't reprogram the Arduino with the MIDI circuit connected to the RX pin, so having this jumper will allow us to reprogram the circuit later. Now 
Now we'll just keep following the diagram and installing the resistors and jumper wires where they need to go. While we're at it, we'll use a pair of side cutters to trim the wires flush with the board. Now let's install the 1N914 diode. The diode is positioned between two adjacent pins, so we need to bend the wire so it is installed standing up like this. If you look closely, you'll see a black stripe on one end of the diode. This side of the diode goes to pin 2 on the optocoupler. Once you've installed it, this is how it should look. Now we can just continue following the diagram and install the rest of the part. Now I'll use a multimeter on continuity mode to check for bad connections and short circuits. Notice how I'm placing one probe on the positive rail and then using the other probe to check all the other points that should be connected to positive voltage. If the multimeter beeps, then the connection is good. I will also use the meter to check that things that aren't supposed to be connected are actually not. A beep in this case would be bad. Now I'll do the same test with the ground rail. Okay, so we have the board basically finished, but before we attach the MIDI jacks and power jacks, we're gonna need to drill the enclosure. That will be the topic of the next video, so stay tuned. Until then, remember to follow Notes and Volts on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you really like my work, you can support me on Patreon. To end this video, I'd like to personally thank my Patreon supporters who made this video possible.